Welcome to a new thing that I'm doing while Harry's away. Um, I'm not used to doing things on my own. Um, it's kind of the, the way the channel developed is that I got Harry involved and then he started helming. But uh, he's away, so the rat must play. And I decided I'll, I'll try something funky just just to you know mix things up a little bit uh, and I've decided to start a new series kind of depends um, and this will not be another Saturday series if it does continue um, it would end up probably being a thing that I would do on my own on Mondays um, and maybe not my own since I think Harry's not going to be at uni anymore so he will actually be able to do things on Monday but we'll see uh, but yeah this is a new series uh, and it should probably know the title not that I'm sure what it's going to be yet uh, this is going to be uh, called something along the lines of DOG I know that will be on there somewhere because like the game uh, I have now turned this into another um, whatever they're called like the, the dots where it stands for uh, design which obviously is already different from the game uh, and there's a little a that isn't in the thing uh, a random glyphid and now there is a lot of leeway taken with these terms in that they can hardly be called a design what I'm going to be doing uh, they're not that random because I'll be coming up with them on the spot it's not like a random list and they won't always be Glyphids uh, but today it is um, because might as well <laughs> definitely going to be the easiest thing to design and this series will basically be or this single episode or what I would imagine might become a, sh a sh type of stream um, where you would be able to join in during um, and we'll create a type of Glyphid or Mactera or a new species or so things along those lines because I find that fun as hell to do um, and I've managed to do it a couple of times for a couple of our videos but I've never quite done it um, like regularly and I think it'll be a pretty cool thing we do um, which I think I should start because God knows when I would otherwise uh, and yeah so couple of things to run down on uh, it's a bit complicated uh, just designing something really anything I mean obviously I, I could just just be like all right boom uh, and they, this this Glyphid right this Glyphid right here he's gonna have really l long arms <laughs> humongous arms and that's gonna be he's, he's gonna be called the arm Glyphid uh, and and he's he's gonna have really long range and to be honest i'm not hating this idea now obviously i did it sarcastically um and i guess he's gonna be fucking ripped apparently and now as much as i'm doing this quickly this is about the level that, oh, maybe not the about level i would have changed the thing the color but uh i, I didn't think of that <laughs> before doing this to be honest uh and then we put the the legs in and then we, we got ourselves the arm glyphid uh, and that's it. Thank you all for watching. Uh, but no, um, as much as I could do that, um, I, that's not exactly what I'm going for. I'm thinking more technical, um, like cool ideas as to what the game needs, what would be a cool addition. I don't think it needs many more Glyphids, but um, once again, for simplicity's sake, that's what we're getting. Um, that's, that's what I'm doing today. Um, but I thought I'd, I'd, I'd do a little breakdown to like help you and me kind of come up with ideas uh, and this is mainly just um, for Glyphids but you know how the game tends to be broken up into like around four I think different enemy types like there's Swarmers, uh, Grunts, uh, like large targets like fat healthy ones I, I don't know they called tanks I'm not sure what the general term is and then like high value right and I think that definitely has merit in terms of like gameplay. Like those are ways of, of labeling something while you're playing. But when it comes to designing, I think it can be broken down a little bit more. Like there's a couple more things that you can 
you can pull from it. Um, so I, I'll just like label this uh, types of glyphids uh, underline. I'm also not entirely used to um, digital stuff and I'm not particularly great at drawing anyway. So hopefully I can get the point across. That That's, that's my goal here. Not inherently for it to look amazing, but for you to see it visually because uh, then it's just a step up from brainstorming really which i think is always cool and interesting to do um but i think we'll, we'll start with the first lot uh and i don't know how small i'm gonna have to make these uh the swarmers uh, you know and essentially it's uh swarmers uh and spawn which uh is the name of like the green swarmers that the nato site creates and I'm definitely going to have to remove some of these things because they won't all fit. Uh, <laughs> then uh, we have the, uh, I, I'm not sure I'm actually allowed to say this word, uh, the, 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 I don't know, explodey on deaths guys. Uh, I, I had written down obviously what you could definitely call them, I'll call them the kamikazes. Uh, not that I know, I think it's Kame, Kazi, um, which includes obviously the, the Clifford Exploder, um, the annoying twats, uh, I, this is, my thing's far too fat, um, uh, the bulk, and the, I cannot spell Crassius, so we'll just go bulk, bulk plus, uh, for the Crassius, um, and yeah, so you got these ones, you know, it's, that's the kind of like, I'm not sure what exploders tend to be counted towards. I would imagine high value targets, right? But uh, I don't really know them off my heart. Um, and then you got your, your grunts, your, your grunt kind of guys. Uh, I forgot the R, now they're called gunts, um, which is almost accurate, uh, which is obviously the Glyphid grunt, the, the icon, um, the Glyphid grunt slasher, which I didn't realize until looking at it, but they are still called cool grunts. Uh, they just got a little extra thing on it. Um, Sasha, and then obviously guard. Uh, I think now I've just written gourd. <laughs> I'm not good at writing. Um, yeah, and so these are obviously pretty sim simple, like, but you can then kind of break it down. Like these ones are tiny, itty bitty little fellas, but there's fucking thousands of them, right? There's like, oh God. Oh no, oh heavens, oh my. Uh, these guys obviously, you know, when they when they kick the bucket, as as it were, uh, they fucking explode. They're there, woo! That's the explosion, trust. Uh, and obviously, yeah, and these grunt, these grunts are literally, they're just bigger than the other ones. They, oh yeah, oh yeah. But there's also a lot of them still. <laughs> so you're still like, shit. Uh, but then we, we start getting to the, um, the scarier ones slash funkier ones, uh, I would argue, uh, in being uh, like the ceiling guys, and I think ceiling is spelt with a C. Uh, sailing, uh, and those being uh, the web spitters, uh, which I think these guys and the SS spitter uh, would be considered high value because they are very threatening uh, often. But they also are pretty damn similar to, like, Grunt, right? Except that, obviously, they are on the ceiling, which is a bit weird. And they're ranged. Um, and there is, obviously, another type. Uh, but I think he kind of falls in between uh, these. And that's the Menace. Uh, but I think he also falls under the Meaty Boys. Uh, which, uh, I think a video kind of mentions that, you know, they could be classified as high value targets, except the fact that they're too kind of slow to be threatening, right? Like these guys, you know, they're going to be threatening no matter where, really, um, like all them and, you know, kind of explode as bulks. But they're just too fucking slow to worry about. Um, and that's like the Praetorians um, and oppressors. Uh, God, I love the oppressors. They're the best fucking uh, enemy by far. Uh, yeah. Ceilings and oppressors, and I think Menace is a blend of the two because he's, he's a very meaty ceiling creature um, And he definitely feels it although obviously he's got fat fucking weak points to make him actually killable um, 
and yeah, I'm definitely going to have to raise some of these. Uh, also, if you couldn't tell, I've got the uh, soundtrack on the background. And we never normally had this before because it would be on YouTube and the ads would play. Uh, but since they recently added it to Spotify, uh, now, and I do have Spotify Premium, so I can slap this bad boy on without any ads. Um, and as long as I don't go over the time, we shouldn't start listening to random Spotify music uh, because that would go poorly. Um, but yeah. Uh, so yeah, uh, ceilings, meaties. I then think um, I think we'll, we'll do spawners next um, because I think I'm keeping the one I'm going to do this video on for last. Uh, spawners. There's not many, as in really only brood uh, nexus. I think uh, like generally, like you're only going to bump into the brood. Drew, apparently, is <laughs> what so or the brood uh, brood nexuses. You know, they they pump out the uh, the spawns, and so you want to take them out so you don't get overwhelmed by numbers. Um, and I would argue that there is a another type of creature that does that. But for that, I'm going to have to uh, rub all this out, uh, erase it. Which uh, you better have been taking notes. Uh, all right, it's gone. You're going to fail the final test. Uh, God, I fucking hate it that so you know, just my slow ass writing as the teacher just erases all the fucking answers from the board uh, yeah um and that leaves us with obviously the boss types uh which uh you got the arbalist obviously our Ar 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 uh and the uh lacerator which i think are both you know fairly self-explanatory um Obviously, all bosses could be called meaty, but I think they'd also be called high-value targets. Um, so that's kind of the blend there. Um, but I think the hive guard is a bit of a mixture between boss and spawner, um, because that's what he does, really. I mean, <laughs> he's he's like actively spawn things because technically, the the normal dreadnought also spawns things like he spews the um spawn like spawn are they spawn swarm swarmers or are they like something else because i feel like they they have a reddish hue if i remember so they could probably have their own entry uh dread spawn fuck uh, <laughs> i'm just taking it away but yeah basically that these are obviously your, your your dreadnought bosses not your dreadnought but yeah all of them are dreadnoughts but they're all glyphid the glyphid bosses are all apparently dreadnoughts um, I feel like there probably will come a point where I'll do a Dreadnought boss, just for the shigs and giggles. Um, but for now, there is an, there's an area, and you probably would have been able to tell uh, that I haven't touched, and a type of enemy, and a single enemy, that I want to add another one to. And that's the, uh, the buffer. Uh, and obviously, really, there's only one, and it's the uh, Warden. Uh, I want to change this today. <laughs> I want there to be another one, um, or come up with another one, really. And with you know new enemies on the way, I think we can expect to see some new enemies. You know, like down the line. Um, no, we, we we definitely will. But I, I I think we could expect to see another one that interacts with other enemies in a way. Um, and so yeah, I want to I want to get into this, and I want to start trying to like brainstorm a buffer type enemy. And obviously, this would have been the thing that if this was live, we would come to decisions together, and then we'd run through the ideas together. But um, it's up to you if you want to see that or not. Um, I mean, I'd be down because um, then I'd, I'd also be able to I don't know draw your random ideas uh, to whatever capability I do. Uh, if you want to see a, a grunt in a top hat. I can I can give you a very shoddily done uh, grunt in a top hat. Uh, there we, here we are, the mighty fine gent. Uh, he's got a he's got a he's got a really fancy top hat. He's got like a peacock feather coming coming off it. Uh, oh, he's so refined. He's such a gentleman. Uh, the ladies love him. But yeah, uh, so I think for the warden, we will want to start with like what it does really obviously i mean and I mean, it's, it's pretty self-explanatory uh let's just get rid of the title as well at this point uh, the title will now be warden 
question mark. Um, and for it, I think we should, uh, yeah, basically, Warden, big fat fucking weak point at the top. Uh, and then it has like his little bits. And for reference, I do actually have an image of the Warden to the right, uh, which I will put up for you just, just to, uh, I, can, I can show you. Hold on, there we are. So now you can see what I'm dealing with. It moves the screen over a little bit, but uh, this is going to be our reference point, essentially, because since I'm a bit of a shoddy artist, but even good artists use reference, and I think, you know, since we're going to be doing another buffer, a warden is a pretty good state of point. Uh, so I think we'll just kind of do this. I will start using co different colours at some point, but uh, for now we'll just draw uh, a warden. Quick, quick little warden. Uh, nah. Nasty little jaw. His arms are actually quite plated. Like that's he's like guard arms. Uh, I never noticed that before. Uh, and just yeah, boop, boop, boop. Look at that handsome fella. I like wardens. Wardens are pretty cool. Um, you know, they're an enemy type that doesn't actually attack you, which makes them feel quite different uh, as far as like most of the game is concerned. Um, but yeah, so here's a one. He's got a big fucking weak point. Uh, weak point. Uh, and normally, big weak points uh, mean that they're kind of high value. That tends to be a pretty common theme. They're either fragile or they aren't fragile, but they have a giant weak point that makes them. Um, and that, that kind of points out the fact that, you know, they're kind of a high value, like, this is the high value target, right? Let's just put that, high high value target, HVT. Um, because in the end of the day, if he's alive and doing his, his, his weird tethery shoit uh, to other things, you are probably going to lose, or not probably going to lose, but it's going to be a harder victory. And you don't really want a harder victory, so you want to take him out, um, making you know the weak point and the high value target thing. The fact that the weak point is like raised up as well, like it's literally like you know like all the all the these grunts, like they're oh yeah grunts and grunts and that, and it's like his weak point is like powering up, like hey, hey sh shoot me, shoot me, I'm the I'm the weak point, I'm the I'm the, I'm the, I'm the fucker that's that's healing everyone. Um, so I feel like we we want to use that. Right, we we'll, we'll want to use the. Uh, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna switch the color now. Actually, and uh, uh, I think it's a a, a white and pink. There we are. Uh, that, that, okay, that that doesn't look particularly nice. I'll be honest. <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah, I think we want to be using the uh, the high up or very visible weak point. That's a, a pretty iconic way of saying that this guy's a threat. You need to take him out pretty early on. Um, but obviously, you know, that's just kind of his character design. What does he actually do in game? Um, and you obviously, you probably know it. And I don't know the numbers off my heart, but he um, boosts the defense of everyone else around him, right? That's kind of his whole thing. Uh, let me just copy this. Uh, like, I don't, I don't know how you would represent arm. I guess I'll, I'll give them armor. There we are. Oh, it's just like a t-shirt. He gives t-shirts to everyone around him. Um, but yeah, he basically, you know, at defense boosts everything. Everything is then harder to kill. Um, and that includes, like, Praetorians, which does become a bit of an issue. Um, and obviously, it's generally an issue anyway, especially for, like, Scout, things like that, where they need a pretty firm grasp on their breakpoints, right? This many bullets hit, kills this many things, or this single bullet will kill this thing. Uh, the warden fucks with that pretty hard. <laughs> the warden, the warden's like, yeah, nah, it, it's gonna take you like an extra. I'm gonna assume like 25% more. Like it feels a 25 to 50% more difficult to kill is my statistic I'm going off. Um, so obviously, yeah, he is like damage resistance to, uh, you know, nearby allies to him. Uh, so I'll, I'll say, uh, you know, damage. Resistance, resistance, uh, resist. Boom! Yes, <laughs> damage resistance. Uh, and I think this is kind of the thing that I want to focus on. Not that I want to add another one that does damage resistance, but I want to add one that does something else 
than damage resistance, right? And that's going to be kind of the point. Um, in that, while the warden may you know make his teammates tankier, this other one might help them in other ways. Um, so let me just erase this off the board. Uh, and I think we, we we have like a selection of other things it can do. There's probably some that I, I haven't thought of. Uh, this this is going to be called what do uh, question mark. Uh, and I think there's a couple that just springs to mind immediately. Uh, attack damage, right? It would boost the damage uh, of everything around them. Uh, basically turning everything into like, you know, like, uh, what's, what's the thing called? Uh, lethal enemies. Uh, attack damage. Basically does that to everyone nearby. Um, or it could attack speed. Uh, that could be a, a slightly more interesting approach to that. Um, then you have movement speed, uh, which would kind of suck, right? Like, like I, I, I don't know. I'm pretty. I think this one's definitely a contender, uh, but it, it would really screw you over. Uh, like, you know, if an entire horde suddenly is just quicker, that would really throw a wrench um, in the, the whole system. Um, I can't really think of anything more inherently. Um, but there is a twist, and I'm not sure if I want to introduce that twist now. Uh, I'll, I'll put it at the bottom here, and I think we'll leave it for another time if we do another episode of this, or just whenever me and Harry brainstorm on probably like a podcast or something. But uh, there could be a version of a warden that debuffs you, uh, that would tether onto you instead of their teammates, and uh, slows you down. Uh, well, that wouldn't be really considered part of the buffing class that the Warden would. It would create its own one, being the debuffing. Um, but, you know, with how vague the classes are, you could probably throw them both under the same radar. Um, but I want to I want to try and come up with just one more of these. Uh, and then we have, like, four ideas to kind of throw around. Um, what other elements are there? I guess regen, right? heals the teammates or heal, heals its its allies around it I, th I think healing probably would be an option not my f not my preferred one since that really kind of would be doubling down with the warden in that keeping them alive but um hey maybe that maybe they don't want to buff any of these things but they wouldn't mind doubling down on the uh, the helping of the warden like survivability uh, so yeah i think we'll take We'll take them and just like try and I don't know. I think this is where I would I would I don't know, get you guys to get involved uh, if you were watching the stream and it would be like you know one two three or four which do you prefer and then we we'd go through that one. But honestly, for me, just being on my own like I am right now, I think it's gonna have to be with movement speed. I think I'm I'm pretty down on the idea of a, a warden type enemy that would buff all of its allies around it and then just like speed boost them um, and I think there's some interesting things that could be done with that as well uh, so let's just do move movement speed all right yeah and I think there's a lot of interesting potential for a couple reasons first of all uh, would this warden type enemy which for now i'm just gonna literally i'm gonna do like this that's this is gonna be and since it's a warden it will get like a thing on there would it tether all the enemies nearby which will be like this uh, and they would run quicker but would he i think that that would be an interesting thing like if he basically was just as slow as like a normal warden right but all the enemies around him get quicker so that essentially be like he's just slowly trudging along slowly trudging along and like enemy enemy that approach him just like dashes past like <laughs> like it just like flies past him um and then like they would detether themselves but they would still gain a bunch of ground right um so it would be a bit of a a kind of thing there where they are a threat but they aren't always one right that they would kind of cut themselves off at some point um and then they'd go back to normal speed when they'd approach you but they'd get there quicker because of this guy or he buffs himself as well 
or is always quicker. He's just a generally quick guy out there being all quick like, uh, right? And so he's zip zapping around and all the other things are. So he would literally like he'll be charging along Mac 10, um, just picking up and like speed boosting all the enemies he could find. Um, and I think that would be kind of quite interesting and by interesting i mean strong <laughs> i think if he's also quick that would be a very uh f fast combo uh i just thought i failed a mission there because of that sound check <laughs> um and yeah so he then just picks up like a horde of god knows what and they're all coming towards you at ridiculous speeds i think this one might be a bit worse in that it's a bit just a bit ridiculous to be honest with you but i do also like the idea of him being quick um because i'm not sure how quick the warden would be you would imagine the warden would be like quick at running away since it doesn't actually attack you but i don't think it's got any any specific speed boosts um that anything else like doesn't have um so i think um it could be maybe that he's gets a speed boost whenever he isn't tethered to something and when he gets tethered he slows down but the everything around him speeds up i think that would be a pretty cool pretty simple and cool way of doing it um, so like when he's on his own he's a pain in the ass to kill because he's like zip zap zip zap zap but when he's actually speeding up enemies around him he becomes vulnerable um and that could play a bigger role maybe maybe you know when he when he's existing like i i think maybe because wardens are quite tanky right wardens are actually pretty tanky but you shoot their weak points so you're pretty all right but i think maybe if these guys they're like go and run more on like the acid spitter kind of uh not really acid spitter, but like web spitter kind of path where they are just incredibly fragile right like maybe this guy he he's a he's a little guy he's a little fella um and he's he's just a little I don't know, yeah, uh, just, yeah, maybe he's kind of small, to be honest. I'm thinking maybe weak point at, like, the front of his head, uh, and, like, something, like, it'd have his weak point, like, there, it has his mouth there, and, like, his arms, but he, he would be, like, maybe, he'd be, like, normal grunt size, I guess, but he would, uh, he, I don't know, he wouldn't, I don't know, let's, let's just erase all of it, and then, because I think it's time I actually start doing it. Probably should come up with a name first, I'd imagine. Alright, so he's a Glyphid Warden. Uh, Glyphid Dasher. Glyphid um, Booster. Glyphid Sprinter. <laughs> I think any of them could work. I'm going to just obviously start with a Glyphid. Um, I think Warden implies and demonstrates that he keeps his like friends alive booster implies anything they could be boosting anything so maybe more sprinter sprinter dasher Glyphid dasher i like dasher i'm gonna go with dasher so we don't spend too much time on it uh, but once again that would be to you audience you know you would you'd be able to uh, live thing like dasher no nah, i don't like dasher and then you'd come up with one that's infinitely better than mine because let's be honest that's quite likely uh, but yeah, all right, let's actually start trying to design him. First things first, I want him to be blue. I kind of knew it from the get go. Like I wanted him to be a, a light blue to um, to really differentiate himself, differentiate himself to the uh, the warden's pink, essentially. Um, so I, I knew that going into it. I didn't even know what it was going to go on. I mean, if it was going to be an attacker, probably should have been more red. But um, since it's, it's gone speed boost, I knew that yeah. Blue is going to be its um, visual thing, and I think that also works because it's going to be you know a bit like Festa Fleets, right? And they're they're like the annoying shits, and I think this guy is going to be an annoying shit until he's doing things, and then he becomes like vulnerable, uh, which is why I I kind of want his like like I, I I'm just getting this because I that can be the weak point color, this can be his normal color, um, and I, I think I want his weak point to actually kind of being closed um until it's like in effect essentially um but like he will be a lot less tanky 
like probably still has more health than a grunt um but like he'll be killable without shooting the weak point kind of unlike the warden like warden you really kind of need the weak point to kill him in a good time um but this guy will be killable without weak point but he'll be quite quick so it'll be very annoying to do uh, i think that's that's what i'm gonna run with here and um I kind of like the Warden's white plates. I think that's kind of important. I think that's like to imply, you know, a more passive role. Um, so I, I think we'll have to be like keeping that as well. Um, so yeah, I think mean, like gray, gray, white, we'll go gray, like gray, gray, gray. Um, and then that'll be his plates. And I think those will basically be the only colors we need. I mean, maybe a little whiter actually stand out a little bit i can go whiter because it's got a mid-tone background i'm not i think technically mid-tones a different color but it's the fact that you know if this was white i couldn't use white because it would look really bad like it would just be white on white but since it's gray i can use black and white and it's both visible although technically gray is then not visible but oh well um but yeah i think i think these are basically are going to be our the, the color scheme of the fella um and I, I'm definitely gonna I'm gonna be using the the warden as a pretty strong framework, but obviously I want to change up his this part of him quite a bit. Um, so I think I'm gonna keep his plated fronts. I think I, I quite I really like that. I didn't notice it until now, um, but I think he's gonna keep his plates. And I think uh, I'm gonna want to just put out the flat color first um, plates plates uh i feel like i mean it, it, his arms is not that defensive looking it could easily be on like a quicker guy uh, although it probably would realistically be a little different if they uh, go ship was to do it but for now i think it, the warden's arms do a good enough job of uh, looking pretty sick to be honest with you pretty cool looking arms um and then we'll just do the ones over here uh, the front these arms will be very similar because you, you do kind of need to be able to tell at somewhat first glance that these guys are similar right uh, uh, the warden and the dasher are like siblings in whatever the tree works in uh, in hoxies right that they uh, they stem from the same hive um, or you know that that kind of thing and they will just like add a bit of shading so you can actually you know see the plates uh, people bump. It's not technical in any way, shape, or form, but it, it allows you to see it a bit better. Uh, there we are. All right. So now, obviously, the first first real change is going to be the color, because uh, it gets pretty pink pretty quick for the warden. Yeah, obviously we do not intend to use pink, or at least I do not. It would have been we if we were live, as mentioned, but that's not the case. Uh, I think obviously it's gonna have the same more like all all of the all of the little Glyphid guys have the same mouth. The mouth only really changes if they get bigger. Uh, I'm just gonna simply do a bunch of white bits <laughs> for its mouth. That'll do. Uh, I think you know, there's there's not much to be done to the uh to the, the mouth area generally uh, once they get bigger they get bigger jaws that's like mainly it um, but yeah until then their mouth is essentially just like a, a like a half circle with a bunch of teeth in it's like 3d I don't know how to describe it like half a pie and if the pie crust area was just teeth that's essentially how I, I see the uh, the face of most Gliffords um, and then we'll just we'll just darken it a little bit, uh, darken the areas that they did. Job done. Easy clap, easy cheat. Uh, now, here is where it's going to change uh, quite substantially though. Is I like this plate, but obviously this is where I'm going to want to put my weak point. So I think this plate will kind of open up into the weak point and i think the best way to demonstrate it would be likely to draw it like in its in its halfway mode uh where it's it's kind of covering it but also it's not fully open so like you, sh you can tell the weak points under it but it's also uh like still shows the plates basically like this uh and i think i'll, I'll keep the uh like 
spike design. I like the spike design. It's pretty hive guard esque in a little bit of a way. Um, this this plate, um, or just any bigger enemy really, uh, and then I'll just fill this in. And we'll just darken it a little bit so you can actually tell where this bit ends and this other bit begins. Um, just add shading where they did. Job done. Drawing's easy when you have reference. <laughs> it's obviously easy, but they, you know, it's easier, that's for damn sure. Um, and so here's where the weak point, I think, I want the weak point to be. Uh, it will be like kind of peeking out. Maybe it will always be peeking out a little bit, but it will become a lot more vulnerable to. Uh, to attacking when uh, when it's actually doing stuff uh, uh, how do they they have like stripes of darker tone so I guess probably do that a little bit but yeah this this is that's the weak point I think as it stands he doesn't look it's not as obvious as the one and that's a bit of a problem but as mentioned it will like open up to be almost as vulnerable as that if not slightly less so because it will be lower down um, but once again this guy is going to be weaker than the warden like he will have less health he will be less tanky um, and I think as long as that is the case the fact his weak point isn't as vulnerable kind of evens out I guess I think in a balance gameplay buzzwords type way uh, now we just got to throw in his legs. I mean, really, at this point, it is essentially done. Uh, so it's just going to be filling in. Um, I don't know what I'd, I could do something for his ass. I think we we might want to go for like a, a sleek design. I think I kind of want to. I want to like. Yes, he's got these white tips. I think I might want to go for like a white, like spike cape kind of thing, like um, like I don't know, like make him look sleek. Uh, it's kind of awkward. It's an awkward angle, um, so I, I'm, I'm not really good enough to uh, nail this. I don't think, but uh, I'll, I'll, I'll give it an attempt anyway. Uh, and that might be not the worst thing ever, but also quite bad in the same way. Uh, I think I want to keep like, like you know how the warden's ones go up basically. Like he's got these like castle, like tips is how I'm going to put, interpret for the sake of you know him being a warden I want this one to have like a like you know like a suit where it would go like this like it, it would like branch out and then you'd have like a fancy guy drinking drinking a cup of tea right like, you know that kind of thing um I'd want that on this so like as he's scuttling around like it would just be like trailing behind him slightly uh, it, I guess it would flick up I would I would add a flick up um I think it can't be all white. I don't think that would. I mean, that isn't all white. But I'll just fill in for now. Uh, we'll add a bit of shading to once again not actually really shade it in any technical manner. Just uh, just separate it slightly, uh, and then we'll just do that. And then this will try and convey something there. Uh, I think we'll then use this color to. Uh, like fill in this area like the, in the warden basically do, do. Uh, probably want to put a bit of white there really or the, the grey uh, to separate the weak point from it Alright, and then this blue's got darker bits, so we probably do with putting in. Uh, I know I, I say darker, I'm not actually darkening it here, not that you can see it, I'm just actually making it more blue, uh, which essentially has the same effect. Uh, not technically, but essentially. Uh, best kind of technically. That's not actually how that works. I'm not used to talking while drawing, um, I'm barely used to drawing. Uh, but I think this is essentially the point, uh, although it's not very well conveyed. <laughs> I might need to do a bit of outlining 
I'm not sure how good outlining looks though. Uh, I think maybe we'll try a different angle to try and visualize it a little better. Um, that would kind of be what it is. Let's go from the side. Um, we would have these arms. There would be. I think I, I think I know Glyphids enough from the side to give us a go. They'd be you know doing their little plating, probably a lot more forward. Uh, people bap, uh, and then it would have you know the little uh, weird little fucking U bend. Or like, I don't I don't know I don't know what you call it, uh, but they they do a bit of that. Um, Obviously, its uh, head would be around here. Let's just darken it a little bit to uh, add a bit of artificial depth. I darkened it way too much. Uh, uh, that's the teeth, not that it matters. Um, and I think this might actually help with the conveying of the thing. Uh, so this would be essentially, once again, like halfway open, we'll say, uh, and it will basically go like this. Uh, like this will be like the plating, and then the weak point, uh, or we'll add a little bit of shading first, uh, which uh, will be like around here, I think. Then the weak point would be sticking its rearing its ugly little fucking head out, uh, like here. It'd be like Mega Mind, like it's got the light blue bulbous thing coming out of its head. Um, uh, let's just copy the same bits there, and that should essentially do it. Um, We'll just like add more defined spike, uh, and its legs. Legs will probably help. Uh, oh shit! Just, no. Uh, leg there. Leg there. Leg there. Sure, doesn't entirely matter at this point, because uh, once again, I I don't think I'm good enough to do it any inherent justice. But as long as it's good enough for you to get the point. Uh, I think it there's like a we have like a a white rim kind of like spiky rim thing and then it'll like take over a little bit back here and then it'll do kind of the same thing it'll have a bit of a white rim but yeah and this will be like spike in the background that like you can tell uh, Just add a bit of something, something to it, um, and then what you do did here, uh, like what the warden has here, some weird fucking gill things. Um, I mean that the warden has it that going that way, so not sure if it's a technical thing, but I'll have it go the opposite way. Uh, just I don't know for a slight difference between them. And then it will have the uh, shading, just add a little bit to the legs because the plating is over it and then we'll just add like the, the gill stuff things there. Um, and I think probably could have done with a little bit more bulbous but that is essentially the point. Like these things will be little, I won't say little, once again probably around grunt sized uh, but the warden's bigger than grunt so this will be the smaller of the two. Um, and it'll be quite sleek. I think we're looking like sports car sleek. Um, and when there is nothing around it, when it is not tethered to anything, which I guess I'll, I'll draw the like the tether, uh, which I don't actually remember how it's. We'll go. We'll go there. It'll be blue once again, and it will tether over to something. And that thing will gain increased like movement speed. <laughs> it looks like fucking cheat controls, like to an old game or something, but. Uh, yeah, the um, he you know when not boosting, um, his weak point is closed, mostly maybe entirely, but he is still kind of he, other than his armor, he is still pretty weak 
right? Like he's he's kind of you can beat him up without having to rely on his weak point. Um, but he'll be quick. He'll be like zip zap, zip it rap, uh, zip it around, like woo 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 woo. Like maybe that would actually be like part of his move. Like he would he would only he would be like quicker generally. He would like have a, a speed boost like twenty five percent to maybe fifty percent quicker than most enemies, more twenty five percent I would imagine. Um, and he wouldn't attack you obviously. That's a pretty defined feature of the. Um, this branch um he wouldn't attack you he'd just like run away and he'd like zigzag running away just like zip zap zip zap um and he'd have like back this bit would be like his back armor but he'd have like some fleshy points that would be these bits and obviously the one on the other side um and yeah these guys would yeah uh when not thinking they're running around wow 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 and i would say because wardens when you approach them they scream and they get enemies to come to them i don't think these guys would do that I think these guys, they, they run away, right? They, they they don't bother summoning other things. They run away and wait for things to come. And then once things are there, um, they will amp them up in speed boost and get them like sprinting towards you, covering distance over a good amount of time. Um, I, I'm, not, I, I'm not sure about whether or not... I, I know we settled on that he wouldn't be quick as well, like while he's orbing, which I think it works. Maybe like... Maybe he is 50%, and maybe I should write this down, to be honest with you. Uh, I think 50% speed, um, like, on the own. And then he goes down to, like, 25% uh, when, like, tethered. Uh, and then he would be... Um, then, like, the enemies would gain a 25% speed boost, let's say. Um, so basically, like, he halves his own speed and gives it to all the enemies around him, maybe. Um, so he does slow down to a killable level, um, but also, and his weak point would open up. So he becomes a lot more killable. And once again, he is frail, right? I think he, we're, we're talking, like, um, I, don't, I don't know what the weakest thing with a weak point is, really, in this game. Um, could be the, the, the warden, to be honest with you. Um, but I think we're thinking, like, a normal grunt with a weak point slapped on top, right? So he'd be, like, giga-killable um, at that point. Um, although he would be slightly quicker, but I think reasonably killable quick. But unreasonably killable um, kick would be him in normal without thing. So, I don't know, yeah. I think... I like this this guy. I like the look of him. I don't know about you. Like, I know, it'd be like a silverfish. I don't know if you've seen a silverfish before. Like, he'd be very sleek, very, um, like down like i i think this doesn't represent as much because obviously I, I did try and mimic that but this represents how like low to the ground i want him to be um uh, like if his if his claws are as long as normal things they're just further forward so that they're more low and he just has a real nice like arc to him and like these things maybe will be dragging along the floor like i don't know i just really like the uh like aerodynamics of a glyphid. <laughs> like, it, 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 like, yeah, yeah, we're like, woo, woo. And it's, it's like, yeah, the cow me. And it's just, yeah, I, I, I like it quite a bit. Um, and I wouldn't hear what you think about it. Uh, and about this, obviously, this, this series and or video as a whole. Um, obviously, next time I wouldn't have to go into as much detail on how I would break it down. We'd probably get there a lot quicker. Plus, if I'm streaming, then that would really speed it up i would imagine or really slow it down either or um but yeah i this is something i enjoy doing just on my own and if you want to be a part of it i'd be more than happy to um i hope my abysmal drawing skills didn't ruin it for you uh, i think it's good enough to convey my point at the very least and if not tell me uh because i'd be down for actually improving if it means doing this uh, but yeah, think of any cooler ideas for this, other warden type enemies, um, or generally enemies, but like maybe just for now, keep it about the warden ones, um, what you'd like to see, what you would think you would do better, or what cool other elements this guy could have. Just any ideas in the comments below, because that is cool as hell when you do that, and we always appreciate it. Um, and I think that is us, uh, or me. I'm so used to Harry being here that it's throwing me off. Um, thank you for watching. Uh, remember that Deep Rock is now on Spotify, so be sure to do that. Um, and I'll see you. 
I don't know when I'll see you, really, <laughs> to be honest, because Harry's not coming back for a while, um, and he's got some stuff pre-recorded. We won't be doing the podcast. Um, I think he's going to be coming back for next Saturday. So next Saturday, it'll be us. Um, maybe Friday, but he might come back Friday, but he probably won't want to stream. Um, but depending on the response of this, I might do it again Monday, uh, but in a stream form. So we'll see. Uh, thank you all for watching. Uh, Rock and Stone.